So I want to thank you, Carol. You know, words really can't express the gratitude I have for Carol Everhart Roper. She has helped me with everything. She's a wonderful board member and a great member of the Free Thought Society. Um, she's also my friend and a fellow atheist, as you all know by now. So welcome to the Free Thought Society's Shining a Light on Bigotry Rally. Um, thanks for coming out on this cold December day to show your objection to the Chester County's commissioners hijacking of the free speech zone here at the Chester County Courthouse. Right. The lawn you see has been decorated with symbols from two religions. The Jewish symbol, the menorah, is sitting right there. And the Christian symbol, the crush, is right in front of the courthouse. Now, what the commissioners say is all others are represented by the childish figurines of Santa, reindeer, a sleigh, and a choo-choo train. <laughs> now, those silly figurines are an insult to the symbol and the message that the Free Thought Society conveys through the tree of knowledge. Yeah. Our mission and our purpose are exemplified beautifully with our laminated color copies of our favorite books. Because we advocate education and free thinking, the books promoted learning more about history, philosophy, government, the law, human achievements, science, and comparative religion. Yes, the Free Thought Society's Tree of Knowledge displayed many religious books because we think it is important for people to read their holy books cover to cover and learn for themselves that it's just filled with myth and superstition. Do you know that a recent survey revealed that religious beliefs are known best by the atheist community? They are known least by the Catholic community. <laughs> now we are proud of that fact because the survey scientifically indicated what we have always declared to be true. Atheism is a conclusion, not a belief. Yep. The yeah. saga of the tree of knowledge actually began in 2002 when the Free Thought Society members were asked to submit display ideas. We received many submissions and the Free Thought Society Board of Directors took a very long time to decide which one of the submissions would be feasible. Now, five years later, the Free Thought Society's Tree of Knowledge took root right there at that lawn. And it was an 18-foot high tree. It was an evergreen tree that was adorned by beautiful book covers. And the ornaments were all handmade by Free Thought Society members. And we were so proud and we were happy that finally the non-theist community had a symbol and that it was indeed beautiful. The ornaments glistened in the sun during the day and at night the spotlights made all of the book covers shine and sparkle. And the light projected outward to the public. In 2007, the Tree of Knowledge was vandalized four times. Each time, the vandals attacked the lighting system. Bulbs were broken, they were unscrewed, and they were unplugged. And the repairs were made quickly thanks to local volunteers, and one of them is right there, Andrew. He helped us a lot, Yay. keeping watch over the Tree of Knowledge in 2007. But the fourth incident in 2007 was really scary. Vandals actually brought to this lawn wire cutters and they vandalized our lights. They actually cut our lighting system in an apparent attempt to throw us all back into the dark ages. <laughs> they wanted to extinguish our light, our path to the enlightenment. In 2008, the Chester County Commissioners decided that no signage would be allowed on any display. We knew that the major complaint about the Tree of Knowledge was the name of the display. 
and that's why they would not allow us to have a sign. Well, the sign incident, the sign rule, was actually just an attempt to stop us from our freedom of expression. The name Tree of Knowledge is purposely used to advocate the abandonment of a harmful myth the association of sin to knowledge has hampered human achievement for far too long. Yes. The book covers on the tree came to symbolize forbidden fruit. And we encourage people to pick it and savor the joys of learning. With knowledge, I say, all things are possible. Since there was no rule about the decorations we were using in 2008, the Free Thought Society adds several, added several banners to the Tree of Knowledge, and you see one of them right here. And the display was not as lovely as the 2007 display, but we were happy that we were part of a celebration of the season. In 2009, the Chester County Commissioners passed new regulations. This time, the display could only be nine foot high and 10 foot wide. There was not enough branch space to properly display the book covers. We carefully chose book covers using the standard method of decorating, that's in a triangle fashion, with the shape of an evergreen tree. So the big ornaments were at the bottom branches and the smaller ornaments were at the top. The Chester County Commissioners threatened to remove most of the ornaments on the 2009 Tree of Knowledge because the one book cover, the Tree of Knowledge Saga, was too big according to their standards. It was a coffee-sized table, and it looked too much like a sign. Well, attorneys from the ACLU, the American Humanist Association, and the Freedom From Religion Foundation jumped into the fray and saved our ornaments that year from destruction by the Chester County Commissioners. In 2009, a violent storm blew through Westchester. The Tree of Knowledge did not suffer any damage, but the crash located right next to the tree was totally destroyed. Now I took a picture of that and I put it on my Facebook page and it enraged the Christian community. <laughs> they decided to move the crash away from the Tree of Knowledge and they took it upon themselves to move the crash to the front of the Chester County Courthouse now remember, the right side has been designated a free speech zone, and so has the front of the Chester County Courthouse. But the trash was moved from next to the Tree of Knowledge, and consequently, our Tree of Knowledge stood alone. The crash is occupying that space that they moved to last year today, and it is considered a prime spot because it's right next to the entrance of the building. And you, when you look at the location of the crash, you'll probably notice that it's located near the Ten Commandments plaque, the plaque that we tried to have removed in 2001. We were successful on one level and then lost in the appeals court, so the plaque remains. So yes, there are now two symbols of Christianity at the front of the Chester County Courthouse a building that is a government building, a building that is owned by every one of you, every one of you taxpayers own this property. But the Chester County Commissioners don't see it that way. So our 2009 Tree of Knowledge sat all by itself on the side of the courthouse. Like Carol, I'm losing my place. Uh, Now, all three of the other designs were located at the front of the courthouse. And I also can't help but recall what I witnessed in the 1950s and the 60s. Blacks were being told that they must sit at the back of the bus. 
There was no good reason. They were just not a welcomed or liked minority. Well, in 2009, the Tree of Knowledge occupied a separate but not equal space on the holiday season bus. And now, we've been thrown completely off the holiday season bus. We're not welcome at all. The fact that the Chester County Commissioners have complete control over the lawn of the Chester County Courthouse should be of great concern to every citizen, but most of all, to our veterans. And I call upon the veterans to remember the constitutional freedoms that they risk their lives for at a time of war. The battles that veterans fought for freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and freedom of thought were done so we could enjoy those constitutional freedoms. All Americans could enjoy those constitutional freedoms, religious and non-religious alike. The ousting of the tree of knowledge from the grounds of a government building is un-America, un-American. It is un-American, plain and simple. So I also call upon the Jewish community, Muslims, and other minorities, including open-minded Christians, to stand with us and to shed a light, to shine a light on bigotry. And we ask all good Christians and those of faith to be tolerant and to stand with us and demand rights, demand our rights, our constitutional rights of freedom of expression with us. And now I'm going to ask for commentary from people in attendance and after everyone gets a chance to speak, I will invite you to do a little sing-along with me to songs created by and for the free-thinking community. And a songbook has been distributed, but if you don't have one, you're welcome to take one off, off the table. Now, each of you, when you formed the Human Tree of Knowledge, took a book cover, and I asked you to find your book cover, your favorite book, and I hoped that maybe you would come up and tell everyone why you chose that book cover and why you would recommend the book. Does everyone have their book covers still? No, we put them back over here. Yeah. Would anyone like to come up and speak about this issue? Yes, Stax. 